The news is reporting 29 dead in California. The Paradise Fire uh, is one of the top stories taking place right now. And I don't know where all these people are going, if this is also already including other states. On a completely different level, they've done drills in Arizona where they've been preparing for refugees from California after a big earthquake. And we ask ourselves the bigger questions, what's really taking place here? Is this the new normal? I posed that question last year when we were seeing the fires in Colorado, here where I live. And for a while, it seemed that I was encircled with fires, you know, a few hundred miles that way, this way, that way. And so uh, it's something that concerns me. When we talk about climate change, not me specifically, but people in general, people forget about things that naturally cause the climate to change, uh, cycles of drought that have nothing to do with mankind and that includes geoengineering. There may be other factors that contribute, but we have things that have uh, taken place within civilization that have contributed to the rise and fall of civilizations before these technologies and fossil fuels were even burned. And so climate change is real to the degree at the very least to where we are seeing areas in which they could run out of water. Places here in Colorado, elsewhere in the Southwest. And there are these patterns that we can see going back thousands of years. So I just want to bring that up, that there is a lot of uh, ignorance as to uh, larger cycles or cycles of the sun that could affect things like precipitation, periods in which there's more snow, less snow, not only that, but tornadoes. Not everything is about the way that they've packaged it. And so the climate obviously does change. It changes every day. There's different seasons throughout the year. We've really been programmed, I think, to follow in suit with the idiocracy worldview. And so if someone hears, for example, the term climate change, they may automatically be in this politically charged argument with regards to whether it's man-made or not. Okay. What I do understand is that the sun does influence weather and other things down here on Earth. And for the most part, it is still not being looked at by most of humanity. So having said that, I'm sure there's many people praying right now for California. I wonder how many people are fleeing up to Portland. I've often thought about various scenarios where there would be a massive flight, not a relaxed one. We're like, hey, honey, what do you want to do this year? Oh, let's move up to Portland. Or for some people, go west. There's a lot of people that have been drawn, by the way, to Portland, Oregon from bigger cities, and they, they see it. It's a place I moved away from. They see it as it's presented in the uh, online or in magazines or on a TV show called Portlandia. And that's, that's really a false version. You know, and uh, Gnostic literature is often talking about the fallen world, the counterfeit, and counterfeit spirits and counterfeit deities. And so the reason that comes up is because in this world where there is all this knowledge, the knowledge doesn't really seem to be mindfully used by the public. There's a lot of knowledge, not a whole lot of wisdom. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of supposed higher education, but a lot of people are not going in a more higher order line of logic, rationale, problem solving, thinking things through. In fact, and I said this recently, the energy that I feel, and I'm not necessarily talking about you or the people that watch this channel, but a bulk of the energy online, very dark. But in particular, YouTube, just in general. And so there are people out there that are incredibly nasty that hang around some of these live chats, especially when there's a disaster. So this is a free flow, but this would probably be the good time to say that since we talked about events taking place, particular violent events, shootings, there's been a series of them. There's been a series of events. And you don't see me getting on some sort of a bandwagon even if I'm anti um, going overseas and occupying innocent countries that actually did nothing to us on 9-11, I'm not vengeful. And so when something happens in the news where a veteran's involved, I don't seize upon it and take part in that negativity. 
That's for others that are lost the illusions of separation. I'm watching how they go down like the line of different groups. And all of a sudden we see these events take place. And it's like there's a case being built and a lot of humans don't see it. And I'm not saying that there aren't some legitimate cases. And there are. The question is, what's really the cause of their snapping to begin with? Because I'm not in denial that there's violence taking place. In fact, people that have been watching my channel for some time now know that I've actually given some warnings about an uprising in the 2020s, and I don't want to see certain things come to pass at all. Certain things I don't necessarily want to go on record and say, this is my prediction per se. There are certain things that I also keep private. Some things are just almost too terrifying to get into, but I'm clearly seeing signs that we're heading in that direction. So, Live each lifetime as if it were our last. I think that we're here to do some higher work. Now, I'm not going to take up your time reading from a book today, but I am going to get into some urban survival and maybe just read a few things. I also have a, uh, a radio here that I'm going to do a review of because I've seen a lot of crappy emergency survival supplies, and I'm not here to sell you anything. It'd be great if you support this channel and leave a donation for the holiday season, but I, I'm not like linking you to Amazon to buy this. But as someone that lives off the grid, it's not so much emergency preparedness. It's, it's day after day living without the grid and seeing what stuff like works. <laughs> and is it going to fall apart in six months or a year? So I've had a couple years to be able to test out a few things. So we're going to talk about that and read a little bit from the survival guide. Uh, we have the book that I was getting into last night. And I wanted to find something from the Gospel of St. Thomas and maybe... Maybe give it some additional time to elaborate. I've wanted to do this for some time. So we're not going to spend a lot of time, but we do need to bring in the spiritual message and we need to be willing to seek, to search for truth and to seek that truth as we face these uncertain times. So this is from verse 55, Gospel of St. Thomas. Jesus said, if people ask you, where have you come from? Right? How many of you have been asked, where are you from? I know I have. You know, I've joked with my friends saying, man, one of these days I'm going to tell them I'm going I'm to point up there and go, I'm from Mars. Or I, I'm from over there. It was just like a joke in my mind. Like, see that, see that light over there in the sky? Say it's nighttime, like a bright light. I think Mars is one of the most prominent right now. Yeah, I'm from that place. Well, it's kind of funny because the verse says that people ask you where have you come from, tell them we have come from the light, from the place where the light is <clears throat> produced. If someone says to you, what are you? Say, we are the sons and we are the elect of the living father, which a lot of people wouldn't understand, but it gets into what the living father is in this text. And some things are a little bit cryptic. If people ask you what sign of your father is in you, tell them it is a movement and a rest. Now I'm going to go into verse 57. His disciples said to him, 24 prophets spoke in Israel and they all spoke through you. He said to them, you have passed over him who is living in front of your eyes and you have spoken of the dead. Now, my interpretation of that is like his disciples are going, dude, like these people and you guys like just hook up, bro, in the same collective. Like you're saying what they're saying, like, you know, join the club. And he's like, bro, I'm right in front of you saying it. You're like talking about what they're doing. But I'm like right here speaking my truth. And that's how I'm interpreting verse 57 of the Gospel of St. Thomas. But what do I know? Uh, there's a few others that are worthy. I said this before. And Jesus said, it's not possible for a man to ride two horses nor to draw two bows. And it's not possible for a servant to serve two masters. Otherwise, he will honor the one and the other will treat him harshly. Neither does a man drink old wine. I had to think about this. <laughs> but like in the old world, it's like, yeah, don't mix your old wine and your new wine. Makes sense. And that's what he's getting into. Don't put your, you know your new wine into your old wine skins and vice versa. Jesus said, if two people are with each other in peace in the same house, they will say to the mountain, move, and it will move. It's like two people united will be able to deal with a huge obstacle that we come across these modern terms. United we stand, divided we fall. So here we have this Gnostic 
um, verse right here, which is in relation to that. And there's much more, okay? So that's, that's all we will get into there. What to do when face-to-face -face and outnumbered by a mob, right? And let's say you have a girlfriend or a wife or a daughter that you are responsible for protecting. Or let's say that you're a woman who believes in being aware, not totally asleep. And having intuition and picking up what's going on. And so a lot of people have been inundated. I'll just say this briefly with all the disaster films and serial killer stuff. Where it almost numbs them out. So when things actually start manifesting, you know, a lot of people don't know what's real or what's fiction. And through the cry wolf bombardment syndrome, which is a term that I've coined. I've coined several terms. Maybe one day in a book off a glossary of terms. But the cry wolf bombardment syndrome you know, we live in the world where people have been traumatized in the post 9-11 world to be told that events are about to happen. It's not a matter of uh, if, but when. They're not pointed on as strong as they used to during the Bush administration and under various periods in the Obama administration, but we're not out of the woods yet. There's still a lot of fear. Right now it's focused on the caravan. I think there are other staged events that are coming. They'll whip the masses up into a frenzy. I even think this debate, supposed uh, a friction between Jim Acosta of CNN and Donald Trump is fabricated to, to clearly separate the masses into these fighting camps. I don't think that was accidental what happened between those two. So we are already dealing with mob situations in Portland, Oregon, to where books like this, and uh, I get into this for like a full hour, so type in Alex Ansari, Urban Survival. And I read most of this. And so there is balance like yin and yang, yin and yang, masculine and feminine. Okay, and, and, and also trinity. But mind, body, and spirit, we have to protect all three. They need to be in balance. So there is the mental well-being. We talk about psychology. And then there is the spiritual well-being. And then pondering the real nature of reality. And there's the, the physical brass tacks. This is the reality as it is, Neo. You may not like it, but <laughs> <shh>. <laughs> you want to stay away from that city. <laughs> Just telling you, Neo. I mean, I know you like to go down there for your noodles and whatnot, but Portland's fallen into the abyss. I'm telling you, like, come over here now. <laughs> and so, like, that type of situational awareness seems to be lacking in a lot of people on the right and left that will go down to some of these protests and, and, and kind of misinterpret or underestimate how violent some of these crowds can get. Looking a little pale here today because I have, of course, the window open. So you have some of that, that snow light reflecting. So I'm just going to read this for a few sentences. But um, it's about being using your intuition and your physical abilities and your mental capacities to basically weather the storm. And that's a number of different meanings, weather the storm. But to get through a crowd, to get through the day, to not off yourself in this reality that's potentially, subconsciously, subliminally, trying to program us to do just that. That's what I'm suggesting. So I want to help people get through these difficult times. Even if I'm just some guy that you click on and just hear a few bits of, of reason, you may not agree with everything that I have to say. I don't expect that you do. I think it would be great if you support my channel and even share some of my videos throughout the web. Let people know about it while we still have this technology, while we still have some free speech. I'd like to see some positive things come about in my own future other than just live isolated in the hills. But I also accept that and I'm so grateful that I am alive and that I have certain abilities and that I have certain things in this world where so many other people do not. So many other people that are literally being violently removed off the planet. For now, at least, I've been spared that reality. Do you not think that I am grateful to the almighty supreme being? I recognize where there are miracles and there could even be divine intervention and a certain level of protection as long as one continues to seek to be an asset of the creator. A lot of people like to laugh off that concept. Certain things that have come to me almost internally in my heart for years and years, at least 10 years, those aren't things I'm going to walk away from, those internal truths. Those are the things that I'm going to speak of more commonly, more often, with more passion. So I've seen my fair share of mob situations in real life, but 
most of them on video and since leaving Portland, Oregon. Oh, thank you. I'm just, that was, that was divine. That was, that was like a God shot. The fact that I went through that experience, nothing really bad happened when I moved back to Portland and didn't really have like a cushion to land on and like, you know, go back to work and whatnot. It was, it was rough, but I survived it, got out for the last time in 2015. And then things began to erupt beginning around 2016 before Trump was even elected. The tensions were already erupting. So there are people that literally are living alongside these mob type situations and I've always felt that Portland and other places, they would manufacture unrest uh, deliberately to create a type of disaster in some of these zones on purpose. And then they can even at some point, and this is more speculative, and we'll talk more about this maybe on VHX, you know, how to escape a occupation or invasion of the West Coast. You know, and I would be open to almost like a think tank uh, on a organic grassroots level. I could first put out a video, but also hear what other people have to say. But that's something that I would consider to be a hot topic. But that is something that I think that people should um, be aware of on a personal level. If they're in a high risk area, whether you're watching from California, I think I have increased support from California. I think that there's a reason why some of you are watching this channel as well as people that are still watching from Portland. And it's good to know that. And uh, it's good to uh, hear from some of you that are out there. I really appreciate that. So let's just start reading what to do when face to face with an out and outnumbered by a mob. Uh, you probably don't want to do with what that guy did on YouTube, laughing at liberals and pull out a gat. Or a Glock. <laughs> I don't know if he's out of jail yet. But knowing that you're going into a violent situation like a protest, that's different than a mob situation that's just erupting from civil unrest or an economic collapse or something else. That seems to be more related to um, a protest where people are already going to be emotional. So if someone's identified to be a conservative blogger, sure, he has the right of way, but there's still going to be trouble. And is it going to be worth it to get into something when the legal system may be against someone? And it seems that the legal system may have been really adamantly against the Laughing at Liberals YouTuber. Um, coming face to face with a mob usually means that one person in the mob has identified you as a potential target. They are still assessing you. Otherwise, they would have already attacked you. By calling you out, a member of a mob is actually protecting themselves, getting to know you better in order to weigh their chances. It's kind of interesting writing the way the author is laying out some of these scenarios. You will get one chance and one chance only to answer them and show them they should not waste time on you. You need to get yourself into the mindset of a crazy alpha male. Imagine a guy who fights for enjoyment and has over 100 fights in his lifetime. This is something that works in some situations. You want to pick your shots with this type of behavior that he's recommending. Uh, this is the mindset that you need, he writes. And But I do agree with that. And when people are perceived to be weak, and it is the sad state of human psychology that when a few people start effing with someone and even accusing them of something that they're not guilty of, fascist, fascist, da, 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 there could literally be a bunch of people like around them that are calling them that at the same time out of herd behavior. And maybe if there is some sort of pushing back and forth, well, the herd will stick up for the person, even if that one person walked up and slapped the other dude. If the guy that ended up getting slapped actually fights back, he has a mob on his hands just like that. Now, if he has a girlfriend with him and children, and let's say he's in a car, we've seen this play out. What do they do? They jump up on the car. And so, you know, like there are different variants of this. Think beyond left or right. But we've seen in places like Portland and other places, especially since 2016, uh, the rise of the mob that will take things out on a family that's not even political. So there are people that have been, uh, oh, yeah, dude, you're going to try to block me? Dude, you need to get away from the car. And I'm not necessarily saying <laughs> in those situations, I've watched the mob back down to like the dude who's playing that dude you need to get away from my car or i'm gonna you know and that doesn't always work though it depends if if you're uh if someone really doesn't have it in them to deal with the whole mob and at that moment the mob has more energy people energy and anger 
then that could be that could be a a uh, a bad play. So there is a video where it says uh, riot cops clean the street of Portland protesters. It was from a few years ago. Well, if you watch some of those clips, there's an earlier clip where a car full of brothers, right, are being stopped and they get out and they're like, you know, they're like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, uh, that's an example of in a matter of a minute or two, they're, they're like, okay, we're going to Black Lives Matter. You know, we're going to let you guys go, but we're going to like stop everything else. There's other situations where um, it could turn out really bad, though, for the person that isn't prepared to deal with the mob. So, with your confidence and a little luck, it should work. Otherwise, be prepared to run or fight. Fighting mentality and tactics. Learning a few moves is one thing, but these are nearly useless unless you have practiced them many times. Martial arts go a long way in helping you develop a fighting mentality. It's all a matter of the quality of the uh, of of the training, and maybe the experience of both the person training and the person training them. Uh, he suggests watching YouTube, where you can find a, a a great deal of street fights, also very disturbing ones where kids are playing the knockout game, and in some cases hitting women, highlighting the violent world that we're in. So people need to be aware of their surroundings. And so the very first thing, I'm not going to keep going with this one. The, the very most basic thing is to be aware. So a lot of people will be like going through reality on their cell phones. And I'm not in an urban environment anymore. There's less of a strong cell phone signal throughout this area. So it's not overpopulated with phones. But uh, still see people, you know, in, at least in urban areas. If I go to other towns just staring at their phones, like it's some sort of a spiritual experience, like gazing into the water. And by the way, I made a past video where I was kind of commenting on this idea as I was kind of filming some sort of a statue in northwest Portland in the Pearl District that featured some sort of little girl in the Portland Victorian age um, standing next to some sort of uh, pool of water and maybe gazing into it and discussing how the social engineering and programming have taken us away from the enchantment era, almost like Alice in Wonderland, you know, like fascinated also by certain things in nature uh, and gazing into actual water. And then, boom, they replace that natural inclination and intuitive nature to be looking into the phone and the matrix for answers. Instead of looking into one's hands, looking within or praying or looking into the water or